Okay, uh, Michael, I think now it's uh, uh, over to you. Okay, thanks, Ravan. Tomaso, that was great, actually. I think I love that first-hand experience. Um, coming, uh, nevertheless, closer now to uh, the end. So we have one more presentation and a fire chat. Please stay with us. So we have with us now uh, Radovan Kopecek, um, who is uh, one of the founders of ISC Constance. Uh, he's been working there for uh, many, many years. And uh, many of you who are active in bifacial probably know him very well because he's also one of the co-organizers of the BiFi event, uh, which uh, is one of the great uh, get-togethers and knowledge centers for bifacial technologies. So what we will do is by um, Radwan will give a, um, a quick presentation actually, so he will drive some conclusions um, of what we learned today, give an outlook. And then we do a really um, somewhat fancy quick uh, fire chat uh, um, to, to simply see um, how we can answer here um, um, or find some, some, some really precise answers uh, on what's open for bifacial. Okay, then Radovan, the floor is yours. Please be precise and short, <laughs> we can talk to each other afterwards. Thanks. Okay, Th thank you. Thank you, Michael, for, for the introduction. And um, wow, <laughs> almost four hours uh, uh, talks about uh, bifaciality. I, I've seen it all and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. So, so congratulations for, for putting this up. And uh, we lost, of course, some some uh, spectators, but I think we are still between sixty and seventy percent. So, so it's quite nice. Um, my my talk will be about power of, of bifacial, and uh, you can see quite quickly on, on this slide that uh, from past to the future is that you go from uh, two bus parcels to many bus parcels these days. But many uh, producers have it. On their roadmap, IBC is the holy grail, and uh, then we have uh, also bifacial IBC in future. And uh, so to summarize the applications we have seen today, uh, not all of them, I would say, but for utility scale, you have fixed tilt, vertical, and, and tracking, but also for rooftop, it's the same thing. You can have fixed tilt, vertical, like uh, small bifacial modules because of the wind load, and then also tracking is uh, now happening on the rooftops and uh, then you have fixed tilt, for example, so like uh, horizontal for uh, gas stations, vertical for uh, sound blocking systems and also tracking of facades. So it's a very, very uh, a huge bi bifacial world out there. And um, what is interesting is that you have, of course, different curves. I do not have to talk about it too much because Olga already mentioned that we have this uh, camel uh, curve when going to vertical. I think this is quite a uh, good uh, graph from uh, PI Berlin, from Lars Podlowski. I, I taken it from his uh, white paper where you can see actually the power of bifaciality in, in a few, few numbers. And I have included only, let's say, this vertical uh, uh, component, but he has already included it all. So if you go from a monofacial fixed tilt, if you are going to, to implement uh, uh, fixed tilt by facial, then you can gain between 5 to 15 uh, on, on flat roof. But if you go to utility scale, depending on the albedo, you can go even up to 30%. And uh, this is quite remarkable. So, for example, if you are putting white uh, gravels under the modules, you can, you can of course, increase the, the albedo. But if you go to, to uh, horizontal single axis tracking, of course, the trackers give you already an advantage. And then if uh, everything is optimized to the bifaciality, together with the trackers and bifacial modules, you can have 50% uh, electricity advantage from, from the bifacial field. So uh, bifaciality is out there with large impact. You heard all the plans, and uh, but it actually started 
uh, not so far away in 2013 with the Japanese Sanyo and PVGS, and then it continued, for example, in Chile. This uh, system has been built in 2016, and I've been there in 2017. And uh, Franco Traverso, maybe he is listening. Hello, Franco. You were the one of the bifacial pioneers. And uh, you can see that actually he was optimizing the, the, the this bison field uh, on for bifaciality. And then, so this is the, the picture from the top and picture from the bottom. And what is interesting, of course, the modules are not optimized yet. The, the modern modules look uh, much nicer now. But you can see he was not cleaning the front side and also not cleaning the rear side. And the rear side, because it's glass, that was uh, after one year completely, completely clean. And uh, this is quite an interesting observation at that time. Then NL at the same time has constructed, as to my knowledge, the first uh, bifacial uh, tracking system at La Silla, also with our Bison modules. And that was the start maybe of, of bifacial tracking because they uh, have published these numbers and, and then uh, many people were, were following their, their instructions. And uh, so we have uh, talked about uh, megawatt and now I believe that the largest bifacial tracking system is now built by Kalion in, in Turkey. And uh, so now I think we will start to talk about gigawatt single bifacial systems. And I'm quite sure that actually one cent per kilowatt hour will be uh, reached by those systems. And here you can see that depending on the installation and depending on the modules that you are choosing, you can get 10% plus minus three by facial gain. Olga already mentioned it, but, but I think this is a very interesting uh, thing for, for Europe and you don't have uh, too much space, then you can also install vertically and then next to some is uh, claiming 10% by facial gain. But to explain it in more detail, why can such a system have 10% uh, by, by facial gain? And also for, let's say, uh, snowy uh, regions, you don't have to maintain it too much. You don't have to clean the surface. You can have even 50% by facial gain. But here it's extremely important what you are comparing with. So you should not compare um, apple with peers, but uh, apple with apple. So if you look, for example, at the vertical installation and uh, by facial factor of 0 0.9 of your modules, because for this system you, you need top cone or heterojunction, then uh, for grass has an albedo of, uh, let's say, 15 to 20%. And uh, uh, that means you have a by facial gain only when you are, let's say, looking, of course, at the same amount uh, of the by facial modules, of course, if you are putting, let's say, the um, modules in there and, and, and pack it fully, then the electricity that you get from your field is lower. But of course, you have a very large ground coverage ratio. So that means only to the same amount number of, of modules, and here you have still a, a high ground coverage ratio, the, the let's say, bifacial gain is, is also 10% in this case. Okay, so Michael asked me to uh, put some bifacial orders uh, on this slide. And uh, so these are, let's say, very short phrases. What we believe is, uh, are the facts of, uh, for bifacial technology. So, so for the module side, the bifacial modules these days have almost the same costs per watt peak. And uh, the best module is not the one with the best uh, bifacial gain or bifacial factor. This has to be proven, let's say, in the installation. So depending on your installation and also on the, on the costs for higher bifaciality, you can use PERC modules with a lower bifacial factor, or for example, this uh, vertical installation needs a high bifacial factor. That's why you, you need to go to, to high bifaciality. Small, small frames are, are needed. And that's because if you are installing, like in this uh, picture, you can have some, some uh, uh, breakage of uh, modules without a frame. And uh, they are also necessary for the mounting. Otherwise, let's say frameless modules, uh, you have to, to, to fix them again after a while. And uh, so the system, oh, look at this guy. So that's why you need, uh, <laughs> you need, you need frames. 
the optimal fixed tilt uh, by facial gains are higher than for horizontal single axis tracking. But let's say if you go to fixed tilt PV systems, you still can, can go for monofacial or bifacial. That depends on your installation geometry. And I, I would say the most important sentence of this uh, then bifacial order is that it does not make sense anymore to mount monofacial modules on trackers anymore because the trackers, they have a certain distance from each other. And, and even if you have only, let's say, eight or seven percent by facial gain, then, then uh, install by facial. And uh, so that's, I would say, the, the, the major uh, rule. And I'm quite sure that actually uh, the bifacial horizontal single axis tracking will lead at, as a first technology to, to LCOEs below one US cent per kilowatt hour. So for utility scale, the natural albedo is the best, but let's say for, for flat rooftops, you can also uh, enhance the, the albedo. And uh, as I told you before, bifacial vertical PV systems are almost maintenance free because they are vertical. So they are, can be used in places with a small space, but also in, in snowy region or sandy regions when you have to clean uh, the modules a lot. And uh, double glass modules, I would say, are the best joints for, for last and uh, lo lo uh, long lasting and low maintenance modules. But of course, the, the um, transparent back sheet has, has also some advantages. So if I um, would install a bifacial system and look at the lowest uh, LCOEs that can be achieved, this is, let's say, of course, a desert system. We have seen the numbers from the MENA states that they are coming close closer and closer to one cent per kilowatt hour. But of course, they have some, some different uh, financing schemes. But, but these systems will play the most important role in future. And depending on if you are installing a, a PERC module or a TOPCON module, you can have a bifacial gain of 7 to, to 13 percent. And uh, so trackers together with bifacial modules are, let's say, our future. And uh, the bifacial advantage you can see immediately then, then in your, your graph. Coming to the modules, and I will not spend too much time because Ol Olga already explained quite nicely. So we have, of course, PERC modules out there. We have TopCon. We have also bifacial IBC. And also, you maybe read it in the chat from Herald that there is also P-type uh, PERT, which could also work quite nicely because they have a quite high bifacial gain. But let's say my favorite uh, module out there has small frames, has double glass, shallow junction boxes, of course, a very good encapsulant, reflectors between the cells, and type solar cells are now, now getting uh, more attraction than, of course, uh, more bus bars. At the end, maybe no bus bars at all, or let's say, of course, on, only not on the front side, but and, and then also half cells. Now coming to my my vision, because maybe you did not uh, see it, but uh, crystalline silicon came from space and now it's going to space again because the, the weight for, for uh, PV in space doesn't play so much role anymore because you shoot a lot of satellites out there and, and uh, you need also, let's say, low-cost uh, uh, modules per watt peak. And this is what is happening at the moment. If you are in the low orbit, then also the degradation is, is a little bit lower. The normally, so there will be out, a lot of uh, uh, modules out there in space. Of course, in space we have no albedo, so bifaciality could play a role, maybe not. But what is also happening is that uh, maybe soon <laughs> we will have also a lot of uh, modules on Mars. And uh, we have seen from, from Martian actually that uh, these are also already bifacial. We see the same, uh, very similar. Uh, albedo on Mars as in the Atacama Desert. And that's why we are also testing in the Atacama Desert uh, with Atamostec. We have several um, systems out there, vertical, fixed still, and track bifacial. So this is my, my vision. We have to use bifacial modules soon or so, also in space. And uh, yes, let's move together to one cent per kilowatt hour with bifacial tracking. And with my very last slide, 
I would like to invite you to official workshops. Cool, Rado. Thanks so much. Okay, um, that was um, short, concise. Um, let's have now a short uh, fire chat. Uh, honestly, I have to say it's my first, um, but um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how it works. Okay, Rado, uh, the idea is short questions, so short answers, no answer then longer than one sentence, okay? So... Oh, that's difficult. Oh, okay. If you look at bifacial technology, how important would you rate it on a scale from one to 10 for helping solar to turn into the world's largest power generation source, which we all think will happen? So I would say honestly, 11. Okay. <laughs> okay. And why do you think that is the case? Yes, uh, quite simple because we heard, it, uh, we heard it in the newspaper that uh, solar is the new king of energy markets and to become the, the next emperor, it has to be by facial tracking and uh, we, are, we are going there. That's great. We are really happy that the IA has now also understood that as well. So today the share for biofacial um, is very small but quickly growing. Do you agree with the forecast from ITRPV for bifacial module, which assumes 20% market share today and 70% by 2030? If yes, why? And if not, what's your estimate? So I would say this is quite conservative. We, we have seen it today. Everybody is going, going bifacial now and China decided to go perk from uh, yesterday to tomorrow very quickly. And I think this will happen with the uh, bifaciality as well. Okay. So um, we're nevertheless at the start. Um, what um, was the, the absolute key breakthrough that has helped bifacial to leave its niche from your experience? Yeah, this is definitely PERC. That PERC became bifacial and the second thing which is important is the bifacial or the reflectors between the bifacial cells so that you don't have to cannibalize the front side power. Okay. How important are external factors like the one we've seen in the US where the temporary on off bifacial tariff exemption um, supported um, the use of bifacial modules? Yes, that was, I would say, extremely important as, as, a, as a catalyst because there was no way around by facial anymore. But this, let's say, made the um, companies understand the beauty of by faciality. So it was a catalyst, but you cannot stop by faciality, even if the terrorists would not be there. Okay. Um, we I've quoted you a couple of times in, in our reports, which will be soon online, where you said um, the most important things for the development of bifacial are bankability, standards, and simulation. Um, after this event, um, the question is uh, if this is still correct or if you would add anything. So let's uh, spend a few minutes on the, the three topics. Can we, can we put a check mark for bankability? Mostly solved or not solved? I would say for, for standard applications, solved. But of course, there are others coming up like uh, vertical mounting. And uh, so we, we, we still have to, to work on it. So it will be still a topic in bifacial workshops. Simulation, mostly solved or not solved at all? Uh, I would say same thing. We need uh, more, more data still to, to compare the simulations with reality. And that's why I'm, I'm very happy that, that the community is now showing also interest in sharing data. And, uh, but, but also let's say for non-standard applications like vertical, there are not so many good uh, simulations programs so far. So I would say almost solved, but, but we have to improve. Okay. Um, and standardization, solved, not solved? Um, there are good standards. So I would say yes, but uh, not many people are, are using them. So that's, that's, that's yeah. 
Okay, so then let's maybe quickly go a little bit into details. So bankability, mm -hmm. what's needed to further improve the bankability of um, bifacial systems? Is it just the new ones actually that, so also for the new ones, especially also with the learnings that we have, is it just about creating data? So what is it? Yes, I would say so, creating data and, and, and of course, I mean, the, the devil is in the details. So, so let's say the, the, the bifacial gain that you simulate with PVCYST, that, that is bankable, but maybe not the modules that, are, that you are putting in there because there are more and more bifacial producers getting there. So I would say in, 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 in respect to simulations with PVCYST, it, it, it's, it's already okay if, if you are talking about standard systems. Okay. Talking about simulations, how can stakeholders narrow the gap between simulation and real results? And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, higher independent <laughs> um, uh, simulation, um, let's say parties that, that more or less uh, simulate, maybe not with a bankable program, but, but prove if the PV assist was correct gathering albedo data as we heard and, and the problem is also sometimes with uh, very positive uh, pun files these days so so this should be also checked if, if the, the numbers in the pun file are correct or if, if this yeah, if they... okay so then coming back quickly to the standard you said um, already that you're apparently not fully happy with it because not many people are using it so far. Um, we've learned from Ansgar um, that actually there's a lot of possibilities. Um, so what, what, what do you think from your experience first is still missing or needs to be improved on the, on the content side of the, of, the, uh, of the standards? And second, how can we speed up um, how can we speed up um, the, um, deployment and, and use? Mm, so, so, Michael, I, I still believe that, I mean, the standards are, are well uh, established and, and, and the idea behind it is also good, but it's, it's, it's still very complicated to, to sell the bifacial advantage. And uh, so the bifaciality, this is at least from my experience, will be more considered as, as an add-on, like a lower degradation or a lower temperature coefficient. So, so it will be very hard to, to quote for, for higher bifaciality. Maybe in the, uh, and again, I come to the non-standard applications, for example, for the vertical systems, it's extremely important to have a higher bifaciality factor. And then higher costs for for vertical systems for bifaciality can be can be added but but let's say for standard bifacial perk i don't think so okay then maybe so what's the consequence maybe so um, in terms of will module makers ever be able to sell the rear power similar to the front power no i don't think so it's 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 some some cream on the cake and um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Okay, um, then let's briefly go, uh, we, we, have, we take three, four more minutes, um, but we wanna deep dive simply quickly into sales modules and systems, um, especially sales modules as these are also in the topics of the reports that we launched today. So how, how important is the move from PERC to high efficiency cell technologies now for the deep the de development of bifacial or the further development of bifacial? Yes, I think it's important. Um, the front side is, is still the, the most important thing. And uh, now um, PERC is coming to its efficiency limits. I mean, uh, Longi is of course showing impressive uh, numbers, but, but still if you apply a good top con concept and you can go to 24% and, and the front side still matters. And, and it's a cream on the cake that the TopCon has even uh, a higher um, uh, bifacial uh, factor. And, uh, but this, uh, as I said, it's, it's, it's a cream on the cake. The, the front side power is still the most important and it's, it's now necessary to go to, to higher efficiency front side modules. 
because that's what's uh, lowering the, the LCOE. Okay, so what, what do you see as yeah. three key challenges that, that we need to work on um, on the cell side regarding bifacial technology, also when looking at the, the newer high efficiency cell technologies? Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so all end concepts, uh, end type concepts are still, of course, more expensive. And that's mostly because of uh, higher cost end type substrates and uh, because of the silver metallization. So this is what, what we are working on to, to make it, of course, high efficiency with passivating contacts, but also to reduce the costs using uh, aluminum instead of, instead of silver. And then the, the end type concepts will come into the utility scale as well. Okay. Okay, then let's keep it like this and maybe qu quickly to the modules. You, um, I think the question I had was what your pre personal preference is, glass or back sheet, but you already mentioned that it's glass. Um, um, I, um, the, the question is um, how, or then let it frame the question different. Um, where do you see in the long run um, um, uh, a share for or uh, a case for transparent back sheets um, in, in bifacial and how, how big do you think will be the, 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 the their share in the long run? I think of course the, the major advantage of, of transparent back sheet is, is the weight and uh, that will be maybe um, used for flat rooftops and the market will be will be huge because there are many many um, flat rooftops in the US and everywhere in, in the industry. So this, this could be one possibility, but, but I'm a big, big friend of, let's say, long lasting products. DuPont is, is, is claiming that they will, they are having already a product which is long lasting. Maybe they have, and this has to be tested. Okay. Um, then, um... How, how thin you can do you think we can go with glass, um, especially if we also um, go now to these bigger modules? Um, I think Longji showed um, that, of course, the bigger the module is, there's also more stress. Um, you said you, you also wanted to have frames. Um, that's a must have, obviously. Uh, so, but what do you think? Where, where will we end up? I'm not a glass expert, but I, I heard from a glass expert that if you go below two millimeters, then you have a completely different uh, uh, process than wet chemical process. And this will be quite, quite costly also, also the hardening. So I would not go too much below two millimeters, I think. This is what, what the experts were, were telling me. And this maybe is also an opportunity for transparent back sheets. If, if the larger sizes are, are coming, then it can also come. Okay. And the major challenge you think that needs to be fixed on the, on the module side of things? Hmm. I think there is no fixing necessary. This, the, the modules are already quite, quite good, half cards and then split junction boxes at the beginning. You saw the junction box was covering the rear side, but now it's, it's solved. And um, so, yeah, use N-type <laughs> maybe inside and then go to, to higher powers. And uh, I'm quite sure that, that uh, frames are necessary. And yeah, so the modules out there are, are already very good. And then maybe uh, f um, also, let's say, better quality encapsulants will also ensure lower PID, but I think this is what, what um, the producers out there have already quite, quite uh, well done. Okay, then one question on the system, maybe ask the other way around, which part of the BOS do you think is the weakest link in, a, in the social bifacial case and why? <laughs> I think uh, the human installers, <laughs> this also belongs to balance of system. So you have seen how, how they are handling um, the modules if they are not, not trained to, to um, uh, install bifacial uh, modules. And I think that there are some study that let's say installation is causing a lot of trouble. And um, 
Yes, maybe inverters are still, let's say, not so much optimized, but we've seen today that that uh, there are already good good solutions. So I would say human labor. <laughs> okay. Final question. Um, I think you've just shown that uh, solar not only came from space, but it's also going back to space. Um, so uh, I don't believe still in this case that they that they beam some energy on the Earth. I think I recently saw these articles popping up again. Uh, it's always funny, but um, but the the question is rather the following. In in many of your presentations, you you showed that bifacial solar will have a lot of party time in the future. So when does the future start for you? I mean, the party started, Michael. Yeah. I mean, you have uh, heard the the nice presentations from from uh, US and, and China. So, so the party is there. I mean, this 70% party, I think that can start already in two or three years, not in uh, 2030. And um, yes, uh, you have founded uh, Solar Power Europe and I'm now up to found Solar Power Mars. So, I'm working also on the bifaciality to, to come to Mars. Maybe you can go with me. <laughs> okay, I haven't found it, Solar Power Europe. I work with them, but I'm happy to support them. Um, so, but um, which of course is still very important to be on the lobby side. And I really appreciate also seeing that Jega just uh, joined the Department of Energy to help with the loan program there. So I think it's great to see that entrepreneurs also um, move to the government to get things going because in the end, uh, and I think this is always the issue that we're still facing, is regulation that's uh, simply slowing down our growth. Um, okay, thanks so much, Rado. Um, let me just... Um, to everyone, um, three minutes. Um, stay please with me to make some announcement. Min, can you just take the presentation? So first of all, our, um, first of all, our report is now ready for download. Um, um, we will, that's how it will look like. The next report um, will be download. So this is on modules and cells. The next report, which is on systems that was done by Olga, the, the other one was mostly done by Shravan, uh, will be um, available end of next week. We are um, men, still looking for people to manage the task of uh, supplying all of you with um, accurate and, uh, and more information about solar. So if anyone is interested, uh, wherever you live, we're a virtual company, please apply. Um, then I would like to say um, thank you to our event sponsors, Longji, Ico Solar, Fir Hangzhou First and Solus without them it would have been not possible to keep this event free of charge um, so thanks again for everyone joining us and see you soon for our next event that will be on solar trackers it will be on april 13th it's the first time that we will publish a solar tracker report if you have anything to share actually it will be not a report it will be really a market survey so with really concrete product data. So we've done our homework and we've contacted a lot of people and a lot of companies. If you still are in the field and we haven't gotten in touch with you, or if you would like to get in the field and let us know something we don't know yet, please get in touch with us, um, with me or with Olga. Um, we will, um, we will, try to make sure that we will include you. Thanks again to um, everyone. I would like to wish you a good day or a good evening. And to those who are still with us in Asia, I would like to wish a good night. And again, thanks to you, the attendees who stayed with us so long. Thanks to all the speakers, um, panelists, and uh, last but not least, um, thank you also very much uh, to the sponsors and my team um, to getting this together.
Thanks and see you back soon.